Lil' B-Man, what's the business? What's good, man? Man, I mean, one thing I want to say is you've been, you really been fucking with me from the get-go, man. Like, before niggas was riding pink vets and, you know, condos, you was really fucking with the kid, you know what I mean, before. And I want to say thank you for that. Man, you were putting it up to my old spot. This shit, like, four, five years ago, you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. Now, now you've been through some shit since we last, you know what I mean? Since we last spoke, man. You've been shot at. Well, you've been yeah. shot. <laughs> yeah. I mean, how was how was that? Let's let's go over that whole night, cause I mean, you haven't really spoke too much about that. But what happened on the night you were shot? I mean, it wasn't really nothing, bro. It's like I just took my little brother to the store, and like, bro, I remember this shit like it was yesterday, bro. I took my little brother to the store to get something to eat. He went in the store, bro. While he was in the store, I'm watching uh, live. I'm watching a live, it's uh, uh, Beto at a Pleasant Grove. I'm watching his live when he was going through that little situation and he was talking, bro, I swear to God, bro. I uh, I get out the, I open my door to go in the store and I just heard, bah! And when I heard the sound, I just looked down, my shit leaking, bro. I don't know where the shit came from or nothing, but uh, I had my kids in the car with me, so. When I heard them, when I seen my chest, like, I was like, damn, nigga, in my head, I'm like, damn, in case a nigga finish me off, I'm finna get away from my kids, you know what I'm saying? So I closed the door and walk in the store. And when I walk in the store, the last thing I did, I see my little brother, I, I, I said, go get my kids. When I told him to go get my kids, I passed out, you know what I'm saying? So you were sitting, wait, somebody was in the store, you was in your car? I was in my truck. With, yeah. the, with your kids? Yeah. How, how, two, how many? Eight. Was it two, three kids? I had three. I had my three little ones with me. You know, I got six. So they shot through the car? Nah. I opened the door when I got out the car. That's why, like, that's why you can't really, you can't really just see, like, say, like, somebody hit me up or nothing because I was out there by myself. Like, if a nigga shot me once, he could have shot me four or five times. Then when I just opened the door, it's like, nigga had to have me in a scope or something, like, and it wasn't like that. So, I really don't know what happened, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. I, just, I just opened the door and got shot. So you get shot. As you get out the car. Yeah. How do your kids react? Nigga, they just start, they just, they like kind of confused, but then they start crying a little bit. So I'm like, I really didn't say nothing to them though. Because I just see my shit leaking, I just closed the door and I went into the store because just in case I was finna get hit again or something, I ain't want them to see the shit. So I just went in the store and I see my brother, I said, go get my kids. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And I passed that after them. So you don't see nobody around I as you get shot? Yeah, nah, bro. I ain't see nobody. I ain't hear no footsteps. And nobody say, hey, none of this shit. You know what I'm yeah. saying? So it's like, it's like a mystery, you know what I'm saying? But it's like, you know, when you out here just moving around, you, you have so much shit going, like, you don't know. It be all kind of shit going on. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Do you feel like it was karma? Do you feel like it was karma? Maybe you made yeah. did something to somebody before? Yeah. I mean, everything karma. I, I don't feel, I feel like it's karma, but I also feel like it was a blessing at the same time. I feel like it's karma because, like, I done did a lot of shit to a lot of people. You know what I'm saying? And everything come back around, but at the same time, it's just like this, bro. Like, when God need to get your attention and you ain't listening, sometimes he'll spank that ass. And mm. it's, it's, it be like that sometimes. So have you just sat back and try to like come up with a list of people who it might have been? Or you you don't really too much think about it? I really ain't worried about it, you know what I'm saying? Because I know I'm here for a reason and I know if it was meant for me to go, I would have went. Yeah. And I know like however like that shit I already planned out, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, but I mean being shot and not knowing who did it, it's kinda like you can see a nigga and you know what I'm saying? You you but, shaking niggas' hands every day and it could have been that dude. I believe in energy, bro energy. You know what I'm saying? Like, if you had something against me right now, the energy will tell it out. Yeah. But nigga did something to me, when he see me, the energy, he gon' even if it, we cool and he ain't trying to talk like he used to try to talk and shit, I'ma I'm a know yeah. for sure. You know what I'm saying? I ain't worried about none of that type of shit, bro. Like, that shit no, I'm not worried about that. All right, so you, you pass out, then you wake up in the hospital bed? Nah, I woke up on the scene. The ambulance. Nah, I really woke up because I kept, I really woke up because the police was standing over me, drive down on me. They act like I was the victim, bro. Say that police shit really crazy, bro. The police standing over me. My little brother, because I passed out, my, my little brother thought I was dead. Mm. Or he thought I was dying type shit. So he like, help me. The police <clears throat> like, get your ass back type shit. 
So it was like, I'm the victim, but the Lyles really acted like I was. So I really woke up then, and then the ambulance came in and just rolled me over. And yeah. You, you ever thought you were, you, you were out of there? Like, you. Man, this shit crazy, bro, because I never thought I was out of there, bro. Like, even though I passed, it's like when I passed out, it's like you see the light. It's like, you know, it just seemed like I was on the beach or something. Like, I seen the light, and it was like that light was telling me everything I write. In my mind, that's what it told me, you know what yeah. I'm saying? So it just felt like, it's like God comforted me through a, a, a hard situation. Like, I, I felt comfortable. Yeah. Like, you know what I'm saying? Right now, I mean, you're in the hospital bed. Um, everybody, you know, they're on uh, Facebook, they're on Instagram, you're getting all the, all the you know, First of all, social media cold in the bitch because I'm shot. I ain't tell nobody I got shot. I'm gonna tell somebody this shit. I'm shot. Like, I don't know. But when I finally got out of surgery in the hospital, I just see like shit trending. Like, God damn, like how the hell this going on when I ain't told nobody nothing? Like, social media deep. Like, yeah. for real. Right, but I mean, by, by getting all the love while you're in the, in, in the hospital. Is it feeling genuine? Because you've been rapping for a minute. Let, let's talk about this. Is it is it is it genuine? Because this you you promote heavy on Instagram, yep. and a lot of times people look over it. But when you're shot in the hospital bed, that's when you get all the comments. But it's like people look over it, but they don't look over it. They look over it because I post so much, and like if I'm posting so much, it ain't hard for it ain't it ain't because I'm not like. Like, on Instagram, it's like, people want to see your lifestyle, you feel me? Like, they want to see you turn up <coughs> on your flights and shit. But I'm really, like, selling shit, you know what I'm saying? So it's like, my page more of a promotional page type shit. So it's like, I don't think the love is fake, you know what I'm saying? People really fuck with me. Like, I see people out all the time, like, my inbox full of messages, like, bro, you inspired me and mm -hmm. shit. Like, and it wasn't even just when I got shot, it's been going on. Yeah. So it's like, it's hard that when a nigga just posting all day, it's hard to just like all that shit, but I ain't posting for likes. I'm, I'm selling shit. Nah, like, that's I'm, respect. I'm okay. surviving off this shit. Nah, that's respect. So it was never a, a situation where you were like, damn, it took me to get shot for y'all niggas to, you know what I mean? Because even, even with us on the blog site, like it was times where we didn't post you and shit like that, but we did post the, you getting shot. Like, I'm just keeping it real. Yeah. Like, it, it, was it any of that or that? Like, damn, like it take for a nigga to get shot to pop in this rap shit. I mean, I did start feeling like, kind of like, damn, because like, it's like niggas who wouldn't even listen to me or listen to me now just cause I got shot. Like, damn, bro. Like, nigga, it's been all kind of shit going on before a nigga even got shot. Like, but, I mean, it just, I don't know. It's like, everything really happened for a reason, bro. And I don't never, I'm not, not the type, I don't take nothing personal. Cause I, I've been in this game for so long, I know how it worked. Mm -hmm. Like, it just, bro, as a blogger. Why in the fuck would you go around fucking with a lot of niggas that ain't hot? Then your shit ain't gonna be hot. The people wanna hear certain niggas, it's your job to get to who they wanna hear. Right. So that's what you gonna do. Yeah. I just respect that about it, you know what I'm saying? Now, you, uh, you got the stay down clothing. Yeah. And I see everybody in the city, you know what I'm saying, with the, with the shirts, with the, with the joggers, with everything, you know what I'm saying? I'm seeing the beanies, the hats, everything. Yeah. Um, you know, talk about that. It's like, I mean, everybody don't know, but I had, what had started, like really, I had moved to Atlanta. Remember I was living in Atlanta? And I was doing all them little shows, you know, you do all, you, cause you get a lot of opportunities. And I was performing a lot of songs. So, uh, the, but when I started performing, I got the song called Stay Down, bro. Every time I got off stage, niggas was like, Bro, you hard as fuck, bro. I keep spinning that real shit. And I'm like, damn, they taking heat to this state L shit. So when I got back, we just, me and my partners came together. Me, you try to, you know what I'm saying? We came together. And we was like, uh, we gonna fuck it. Like, we gonna start doing this state L shit. But we just dropped a shirt to, to really make the music bigger. But shit, mm -hmm. this shit just, we sold, first we got like 100 shirts. We ran through the hall so fast. We just kept doing shirts, and then as it went on, we just kept putting this shit on everything. And then we was going through niggas getting our shit made. And we was like, fuck it. Buy the machine, you know what I'm saying? Cut and, out the middleman. Yeah, cut out the middleman, because this it started feeding our families, you know what I'm saying? We didn't plan on it, but it did. So we just <laughs> kept taking it to new levels. And now it's like, shit, it's, it's hard to go somewhere and not see somebody in the state of shit. Right, on average, 
How much do you think you made off of the off of the merch alone? Shit, I don't know, bro. Because at the end of the day, when you when you surviving off of it, because I don't sell drugs or nothing. Mm. You feel me? I ain't in the streets. Yeah. I sell clothes. Like, but when 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 you paying your bills with it and paying your car whatever, it's hard to stack it up and just count it out. You know mm. what I'm saying? Then. I'm like, I just like, cause I was in the streets. So the shit I was doing in the streets, I just transferred it to the clothes type mm -hmm. shit. So it's like, I'm just straight out the trunk, like a pack. Like that's my pack. I walk yeah. around with a trash bag full of clothes and just offer them. So it's hard to really just tally up how much, but I made enough to survive for sure. And plus more like, yeah. I'm not only surviving, I'm living. I'm cool, I'm not. I'm not, I'm not flexing, but I ain't hurting for shit. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Nah, most definitely. Now, how many kids you got? Like six? Six. Six. Yeah. Man, you were 27, 28? Yeah. I, I mean, because I don't have any kids. You know what I'm saying? And people tell me not to have don't kids. Don't start having <laughs> Hey, because you got to understand, bro. It's a, I, I don't take back how I have my kids, but it's a lot of shit that you want to do that you have to put on hold because of your kids. Like, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, but it's it's a blessing for sure. Yeah. Like, it just they push me. You know what I'm saying? I probably would have been stopped if it weren't for them. Mm. But like, you gotta lead by example. Yeah. And I want my kids to do great shit, so I'm trying to accomplish great shit. Right. Now the DFW rap scene has changed a whole lot, man. A whole lot. I mean, who would have ever thought? Yeah, you know, two, three years ago, Yellow Beezy song would have been the hottest in Texas and. Mm. And stuff like that. Like a lot of people have been up and down. Um, okay. What is your What is your thoughts on the DFW rap scene, though? I just feel like that right now this shit is peaking. Like because you know I've been in the in the DFW rap scene through like 15 di different phases. Mm -hmm. But like through the phases, like it's a top and the bottom. I always been like right here. Where at one point when I had a whole lot of ass, I was kind of like you know what I'm saying mm -hmm. higher, but. Right now, it's like, I ain't never seen this shit as hot as it's becoming right now. Like, I ain't never seen, I ain't never seen a song as hot as Yellow Beezy shit since Ice Cream Paint Job. Mm. But to me, that song hotter than Ice Cream Paint Job in a lot of ways because he came through, Ice Cream Paint Job came out at a point when, it's, when the radio was playing nigga mm. shit. He forcing the radio to play his shit, mm. so it's different, but it's like, it's really peaking because you got like four, five niggas who really like doing big shit and looked at upon as stars like in Dallas, it's hard to be looked upon as, oh nah, he a star. Yeah. Like, and, and niggas doing that right now. Right. Now it seems like, you know, we you spoke on the road. We spoke on this before, but I just wanna say it again. Um you from Lancaster, right? Yeah. And it's kinda like being from Lancaster, it's like uh, it's not Dallas type of thing. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, it's, it's, but do you think that's it kind, that kind of made it harder for you in a lot of ways? I mean, it, it do, but I, it don't for me because I fucked around so tough, and like I been in, I been doing everything I do so much that niggas don't judge me out of Lancaster. You know what I'm saying? Because I fuck around so tough as far as everything, everything I ever said I had to sell, I sold like. And then, like, my whole family from Holly Hill, you know what I'm saying? Like, like, so I grew up over there too, you know what I'm saying? Like, a lot, like, I did a, like, I know a lot of people from over there, so it's like, it do, but it don't, but, but it's like, for instance, bro, a, a, a certain part of town can help a nigga because, like, for instance, if you got a nigga from Compton, California, and he rapping about nothing but gangster shit, nigga gonna automatically believe him, but you can have a nigga from Plano, Texas, and he could be a, a killer, like Take 47 type shit. Like, he has to go to jail in order for the world to fuck with him because he from Arlington. And not saying, I got respect, I've been in Arlington for a while now, yeah. I got respect for a lot of Arlington niggas that I know real gangsters, but as far as the outlook on them niggas, it's like, People not gonna respect them until they they gotta really prove it. Mm -hmm. But a nigga can say he from Oak Cliff, America. He don't gotta do too much. And he ain't gotta do nothing. Mm -hmm. He can just say that and nigga gonna be like, he a killer, bro. He mm -hmm. from Oak Cliff. Like, that's just right. how it is. I'm talking about looked upon as far as fans, but people really in the streets is different. You know yeah, but I mean, Lan Lancaster is one of those, you know, not suburbial, but suburbial out, out you know, out of the line, out of DISD. I'm putting it like this, bro. That is still with the shit, so I don't see why where Lancaster gets in, the bad rap. Where I grew up in Lancaster, bro, I'm from uh, US Home, bro. 
Cedar Valley College, you know what this yeah. is? It's cross street. Mm -hmm. That's my neighborhood. I can walk to the Oak Cliff in five minutes. Walking, driving, I can be the Oak Cliff in two minutes. Langs the road. Like, you know, you 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 own 20, you exit mm -hmm. Langston Road, make a right. The left, that's the cliff. The right, that's Langston. Mm -hmm. It's that close, you feel me? Like, yeah. so like, nigga, like we, I leave my mama house every day, I'm going to the cliff type shit. Or out there just making plays. I'm not just making plays in Langston. I'm everywhere I'm going. Like how we hustle, we <coughs> fuck with everybody, you know what I'm saying? We ain't stationary. Right. So that's why I said I don't never feel like that shit took nothing from me because everybody know me, bro. Yeah. And everybody done bought something from me. Yeah. Like point blank period. Right. Now you was on our blog site last week and you got hella, you got hella yeah. love. Yeah. You get a lot of followers? Hell yeah, yeah, I got like a thousand of followers. Yeah, I'm a lot of good feedback. Man, so I mean, what what you got coming soon, man? Because I mean, you was just on the blog site, went crazy. What you got coming soon? Well, I'm trying to stay on y'all shit <laughs> for the next like until I'm, cause I'm working. I'm finna drop my CD April 17th, and that's why I'm on it. I'm, I'm building up all the anticipation. I'm shooting a video uh, with Half Pipe Films. You know what I'm saying? Saturday, okay. which I'ma say this. You know what I'm saying? We gonna fuck with some cheese on it too. And uh, yeah, like. I got another video for them. We just trying to stay consistent and stay fucking with Say Cheese and wherever the traffic is, we trying to get where they sit into the city drop, which is April 17th. It's called Favorite, you know what I'm saying?